Hi, I'm Alex Archbull, and I've been buying and selling antiques since I was nine years old. From basements to scrapyards, I'll look just about anywhere I can to find lost antiques and collectibles. And sometimes I'll go big and buy everything. With my wife and kids, we run an antique shop in Edmonton, Alberta, Canada, filled with some of the most unique items we can find. I never know what's going to happen or who I'm going to meet. This is our life, this is our adventure, and this is Curiosity Inc. I'm home, honey! Hey everyone, it's first thing in the morning, bright and early. I got up, made breakfast for the family, and uh, I'm headed over to the store because we've got to do a couple things. One is mail off or get ready to mail off a whole bunch of stuff that I sold online. The other is try and assemble close to 100 extra lots of items that are going to go to auction. So to do this, I'm going to bring my son Stephen with me today. And uh, we're going to head out the door and hopefully have some good fun today. Good morning, Stephen. He's a bottle of sunshine in the morning. <laughs> are you used to being up at this time? No, he is extra sleepy, but dad's not. Dad's full of energy. <laughs> okay, let's get in the car. And again, we had snow. Thanks for clearing that off, Stephen. We're taking mom's car today, her trusty Volvo, but if we don't wash it, it's gonna become her rusty Volvo. So I think we should probably give this a bit of a wash down for mom at some point too. Hop in. While Steven gives the sidewalk a bit of a shovel, I have to do a little bit of shopping around the store for my customers who have purchased things online. Uh, okay, where are we gonna start? Well, I better get my list out. What I do is I, when I have a chance to go through the emails or respond back as people pay for things and get me their shipping info, I create kind of a pick list or a shipping list. And uh, on that, we have everything from, uh, you know, we're old comic books and die cast cars. Um, it's going to be a bit of a list today because um, we had a, a busy week online. So I'm going to get busy packing stuff up. After I get my customers' orders picked, then we're going to go through and uh, try to figure out exactly what we're going to sell at auction. So... Um, Steven should be finished up soon, and I'll get him to help me out. This hasn't sold, but I thought it was pretty cool. It's a little miniature drum set in its own little case. Um, not quite a salesman sample type piece, but it is neat, you know, as somebody who's a drummer might like that. I've got to find a spot for that today. Uh, I have these little portable bins that I use, and uh, they were inexpensive. I got them at Costco. They just kind of fold up, fold flat. The other ones are all, I don't know where they are, somewhere, probably in the back of my other car. But we're going to get these uh, unpacked. And uh, that's what we're gonna use to load up all of our stuff. I have my little path here back to the ambulance. I think I left my bins back there. Whoa, that is like the mother of all icicles right there. I'll have to think this jam that's happening. Look at this thing. Hey, Steven. Steven's gonna think this is cool. <laughs> it's like the world's biggest icicle. Hey, Steven, check out this icicle. Here, hold it. Okay, you gotta show how big it is compared to you. <laughs> it's like, you know, two thirds of Stephen tall. <laughs> Poor snow covered little ambulance. Let's see. Did I leave my bins in here from last time? Hmm. Oh yeah, I, I see one back there. So I've got two bins and most importantly, I've got a cardboard box. I'm actually running out of boxes and supplies and I'm running out of places that sell this stuff. Uh, so that's going to come in super handy. Okay, well, the Red Adair Zippo lighter set sold, so we'll put that in the bin. Uh, also sold this 1966 Chevy Nova SS die cast. We'll end up with sort of a nice little assortment of stuff that I'll have to build boxes for and ship out. Oh, I guess I'll have to go in that way. Okay, I might need your help looking, Stephen. I had a customer write and they wanted a 67 Chevelle SS. And I don't have all these listed online mainly because there's a lot of them and they sell pretty quickly. So the amount of time to go in, it wouldn't balance itself out to get the pictures posted in that. But we are going to have a look and see if we can find it though. Uh, 67 Shelby. This Is this it? Yeah, that's a 67 Chevelle. It's not an SS, but it's an L78. That might do the trick. I'll send a picture and see if that's what they're looking for. Hmm, okay. I was going through my list and the customer asked, uh, they wanted to purchase two red decorative glass vases or vases. Um, they should be on that back wall by, by the window. Let's go have a look. 
They kind of look like shells. Oh, I can kind of see them. Do you see them? They're right at the top there, the two red ones. Yeah. Those have to get packed and put in our to-go box if you want to put them on the front counter. Those are going off to a customer. I did have a request for Pink Floyd Dark Side of the Moon. I did find a copy. I'm just seeing if I have a slightly better one to send them. Uh, Jimi Hendrix, Led Zeppelin. That's Pink Floyd. That's an earlier release. They actually took that photograph. There's a funny story. That pig... Hey, Stephen, this is kind of funny. Come look at this album cover. So see the pig right there? That giant pig between the smokestacks? Yeah. That was a real inflatable pig. I always thought this was a painting, but that's a photograph. So what they did is they inflated that massive pig, and they had it suspended on wires, but the wires broke free, and it, like, got into airspace, and it created all kinds of problems. I think they had to shut down a whole airport because of it. Um, and then they decided that they would get the permits and do it again, so they inflated that giant pig again, and they got it to stick there just the perfect timing to get that shot with the uh, the clouds and the smokestacks of the old power plant. But... Um, yeah, it, it's funny that the things people will do to get an interesting picture, they shut down a whole airport just to get a pig for this Pink Floyd album cover. Let's see. Frank Zappa. He was an interesting guy. You can look online and see a video of Frank Zappa playing a bicycle on one of the early... It wasn't Ed Sullivan. It was one of those kind of shows. But uh, my dad knew Jimmy Gilmer. Sugar Shack. That was like his big song was Sugar Shack. He was a Canadian guy. Recorded live on stage. That's the red. Some of the Japanese issues were color vinyl. Edgar Winter. Mother Focus. The Who. Okay. Well, I'll have to do a little uh, look-see. Oh, look, there's Lenny Bro. My dad played with Lenny. One of our customers wrote and she wanted us to pick out five random Hot Wheel cars for her kid, among some other things. But you think you could find five of those for her little one? Yeah. I'm Make sure. them cool. I'm sure I can figure Okay, so they're going to be handpicked by Steven. Um, also, there was a couple socks that she wanted. They were uh, Proud Plant Mama. I'm trying to find a way where that one is. Let's see. Oh, there we go. P Proud Plant Mom. And there was the uh, Namaste, you guys. Those are going off in the same order. Now that I've got pretty much everything packed up, well, put away, I'll have to pack it up later on with my miles of bubble wrap that I've got sitting around the house. Um, I now have to look around the shop and try and find things that might do well at auction. Again, close to 100 lots, probably 75 to 100 pieces. But this time I'm thinking small. This time I want things that are gonna be easy to mail, won't take up a whole lot of room, and probably things I'm not gonna miss from being around the store too much, but they still have to be of interest to people to bid on. So I think I'm gonna head over to the military cabinet and see what's over there. Well, this can go. That is a more modern Canadian military hat. It does have a fun sort of, I say fun, but I like the uh, the Beaver logo on, on the uh, hat badge there, the 22nd Regiment. Nice piece. Sold the uniforms, at, well, selling the uniforms this Sunday, but I can take the hat and put that through. Uh, let's see what else. What I'm going to do is probably go through some of the little smalls. Like, I've got these cabinets full of stuff, um, and we're going to put a batch of stuff together that we can put up for auction. I've got a few little bins that are just full of stuff like this, which I can put through, like these auto strop razors. I could probably put one of those in. These are a nice little thing. You put your safety razor in and then it has an auto strop feature so it will actually sharpen it as it goes back and forth. It's a nice little set, nice early razor. But um, I think these will go over really well. These are 1950s ladies cat eye sunglasses. They're prescription so you'd probably have to get new, uh, new sunglass lenses put in. But what a great look. Hey Steven. What do you think of my new glasses? <laughs> I can't see a thing. This prescription is kind of strong. You think I should wear these out in public? I dare you. You dare me? Yeah. Maybe not my style, uh, but they're going to look great on somebody. So we'll get those off to auction this week. I have a pile of smalls, military hat badges or cap badges, some war medals, um, lots of this can probably go to auction too, because uh, it doesn't take up much space. It's easy to ship. Those aren't gonna cost a whole lot for shipping, and it's really cool, it's really neat. 
This is kind of an interesting piece. It's got the little case there, but you can see on the front, it's got this nice depiction. And on the back, it says Dominion of Canada. So you know it's early because it's not Canada, it's Dominion of Canada, to commemorate the signing of peace at the termination of the Great War, 1914 to 19. So that would be um, something that people would have carried around at the end of World War I or worn. And they were just, you know, happy that they were done with that horrible period of time, you know. So that is kind of a cool World War I artifact. So that can go up for auction. This is kind of a unique piece. Um, these were given out to war veterans. And you can see, if you look really carefully, it says Veterans of Foreign Wars of United States. And you can see they were a post commander, uh, county commander, and department chief of staff. So, you know, kind of um, a little bit of a muckety muck in the military. Um, kind of a unique thing. And I'm sure they wore this very proudly for some time. And now here it is at my shop. And uh, soon it'll be in somebody else's home before too long. I've run out of things for Steven to do for right now. He's keeping himself occupied testing out the pole position game. Uh, yep. Okay. Uh, I think for this auction sale, I'm also going to put through a couple of our vintage books too. I've got a really early, well, an 1800s family Bible, and I think that's the sort of thing that um, would do well at auction. So we're going to give that a try. I got home and I got about half of the stuff packed up and ready to go to the post office that I needed to ship out. But the problem is I still had a couple more orders that have to go. A shirt, a couple hats, um, the fighter jet sample that I had. So we've got to go back to the shop, pick up some more boxes, and um, I've got lots of bubble wrap in the garage, and uh, make another trip back out there. But that's okay. This time I'm switching out kids. I'm going to yeah. swap them out. Melissa is chilling on the couch. So is Chewy. That is one... Uh, Chewy, what's going on? Just hanging out. <laughs> He's just chilling. He's just hanging out. Uh, I am going to take this one with me. ba 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 bum Stephen has disappeared back, I don't know, into a Stephen cave. Where are you, Stephen? Up here. Oh, he's upstairs. Okay. Uh, you ready to go for a car ride? Okay. Are you ready to go for a car ride? <laughs> <laughs> Chewie's looking at you like he's going. Well, no, not you, Chewie. You're not going. See, I got him all excited. You don't look as perked up, but you're coming with me anyway. <laughs> I had to switch out from my Converse to these giant Sorrel winter boots, not because it's that cold outside, but because when Steven and I were at the store earlier, I dropped an 1863 Colt on my toe. Um, luckily, the gun wasn't damaged, but my toe on the other hand, eh, not so much, and I don't really feel like going into a doctor's office or hospital for something like that right now. So I'm just gonna wear these big old shoes and wait for the swelling to go down. Abigail, if you look behind you, there's a really big pink picture. So you gotta come stand next to it. It is, I don't know, about five feet tall. It's bigger than you. But do you know where that, that was? No. Would have been in somebody's bedroom probably on their wall. That's a musician, her name is Janice Joplin. She was a rock and roll singer. She had a really cool car that dad would probably love to have. She had a Porsche 356 convertible and she had one of her friends uh, that was a roadie. Do you know what roadie is? Oh, like the, the people who rode the, I don't know. <laughs> well, you were on the right track. It, a roadie is someone who helps set up your gear at a concert and travels with them. But they were also an artist and they painted this really crazy car for her. I'll show you a picture of it so you know what it looks like. But that was from the 1960s when she was still performing. And uh, it's just a really interesting picture. And I don't know, it's got all the pink colors. But you know, if you put it under black light, it glows. That's what was cool about those 60s kind of posters like that. It glows under black light. But maybe we'll have to get you a special fancy painted convertible someday too. Mm. <laughs> You're not sure about that? You don't want a fancy convertible? I don't know. You don't know? Okay. Well, uh, we need to find a couple other things to pack up. I, we got the boxes by the front counter, right? Yeah. Yeah, and somebody asked us to look at some other pictures, so let's have a look around. And I'm glad that Stephen and I were able to get the items off this morning to auction because after we dropped it off, we found out that they aren't accepting any outside auction items for quite some time until they get the okay from the government. Uh, luckily, though, they still have several skids of items that I'd taken over in the past, so we can still um, sell online that way through the auction house and, uh, and at least get some revenue coming in. But that was my last go at auction goods, so now I'll be down to uh, buying and selling the old-fashioned way, I guess, and um, you know, selling to folks online. 
but we're uh we're just about done i think here today abigail's keeping herself busy <laughs> and since dad's gonna be bored and stuck at home i might see if i've got a few of my little junky cars in my my variety bin here that i can bring home to maybe repaint or do something with oh look that's uh that's our car but that's the the two-door version of it mm, i think i have to bring that home <laughs> i'm gonna put that in my pocket but there are a few other little toys like this that you know they're really not worth a whole lot as they are so it wouldn't hurt it too much to repaint it do a little restoration on it i'll see if maybe there's something in here i can bring back to fix up just so dad's got a hobby while i'm waiting for the interior on my actual car i can't do too much work on it until then so i'll bring home a couple toys to fix up and we can probably take it off the hanger so somebody bought the fiat rally team jacket it was about a hundred bucks Canadian. Uh, don't worry about the hanger, honey. You got it? I'll just put it back. Yeah. Actually, if you want, you can put the hanger on the pinball machine. Dad will put it away after. So that, why don't you hold it up? This was an old jacket we found. It had these Rally Team and Fiat graphics right there. You make a very good display person, Abigail. <laughs> so that is uh, going to get shipped off too. Uh, let's bring that back home with us and uh, get ready to pack up. Okay. With all this driving around and running errands and packing stuff up, I almost forgot there was one errand that I'd kind of promised to do. I forgot I'd promised to wash Melissa's car. We've had this car pretty well since it was brand new and it's a 2007 and we drive it all the time in winter sometimes it doesn't get washed as often as it needs to and it's got absolutely no rust on it i mean i don't know what volvo was doing different or what they do different on their vehicles but it hasn't rusted at all so really good vehicle uh we definitely buy another one when the time comes someday i will get melissa a new one of these cars it's an xc90 but for now we'll keep this one clean and keep it on the road well thanks for your help honey would you mind carrying the boxes into the house for me sure that's it, three weeks of being closed and we're still trying to keep as busy as we can. I mean, heck, social distancing, I don't know what else could happen, but you know, who knows. Okay, thanks for your help, honey, you can head inside. Thanks for watching today's episode, guys. We'll see you all soon and bye for now.